Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 25th of May and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 29th of May. A number of um, data items that I've been keeping an eye out for this particular week, obviously non-farm payrolls, US employment report is the standout item, but we also have manufacturing PMIs, um, global manufacturing PMIs and the latest CPI numbers out from the European Union. But before we look at that, I think it's important to look at the overall backdrop to the price action that we've seen this week. And European markets look likely to post their first negative week, reversing, um, reversing a run of eight consecutive weekly gains. And I think a number, a number of reasons can be attributed to this turnaround. Obviously, markets can't go up in a straight line forever. But I also think that what we've seen this week is we've seen rising concerns about a breakdown of trade talks between the United States and China. We've seen rising concern as to what type of Italian government we might get and whether or, do, whether or not they'll adopt a, an extremely confrontational stance with respect to their relationship with the European Union. More importantly, we have started to see um, weaker than expected economic data out of France and Germany. And I think there was an expectation going forward as that we headed into the second quarter of this year that the slowdown that we saw in the Q1 GDP numbers would show some signs of picking up in Q2. And the flash PMIs that we saw out of Ger Germany and France particularly in services, were much weaker than expected. In Germany, services PMI came in at its lowest level since September 2016. Obviously, geopolitical concerns are still rumbling away in the background. We've now got the potential for a bit of an on-off summit with respect to North Korea and the United States after President Trump cancelled the June 12th summit in Singapore. The summit may well take place at a later stage, but at the moment this appears to be the latest in a long line of potential posturings, negotiating stances or what have you with respect to the North and South Korea question. So um, the last couple of days we've seen a bit of a turnaround in sentiment. We can see that displayed on the DAX here. Two very strong negative daily candles. If we change that to a weekly candle it becomes even more instructive in that we've posted a key week reversal. We've also broken that trend line from the lows that we've seen in March. And when you actually look at the lows in March and how far we've come, we really are overdue a little bit of a correction. It's a similar sort of story. When we look at the FTSE 100, we can see that displayed on this chart here, on the daily chart. Again, we've seen significant... Um, <coughs> We've seen significant uh, divergence on the oscillator. The, we've got a nice little reversal pattern here, potentially a evening star candlestick pattern. We've broken below 7,800 after making a new record high. If we also look at the weekly chart here, um, we haven't quite posted a weekly reversal on the UK 100, but that's not to say that we could be starting to find the air a little bit thin at these sorts of levels. On the currency front, dollars had a fairly good week. Now that could um, that could um, come under um, a little bit of a reassessment as we head into the week beginning the 29th of May. We've, we've got a whole host of data coming out, non-farm payrolls being the most important item. And in particular, what we'll be looking for in contrast to the data that we saw last month, where actually wages have remained a little bit on the weak side. They haven't really gone back to the levels that we saw at the beginning of this year when um, average earnings came in at 2.9. We saw some weak numbers last month and we also saw a revision lower to the previous month. So they've been flatlining wages in the US around about 2.6%, which is a little bit surprising given the fact that there was some evidence that the labour market was starting to tighten up an awful lot more. The unemployment rate's at 3.9%. More importantly, the headline non-farm payrolls number came in at 164,000, which was significantly less than what was expected. Now, for the coming week, um, or for May, we're expecting payrolls to come in at 190. Again, um, 
if it is a low number, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that the labour market is tightening up. So in the context of the overall picture, I still expect, based on the charts that we're seeing here, that euro dollar is likely to come under further pressure. And one of the reasons for that is the fact that EU CPI still remains fairly low. 1.2% on the headline rate, 0.7% on the core. And given the weakness that we've seen in some of the economic data, the flash indicators, and whether or not that's confirmed later this week in the actual official numbers on the Friday, the European Central Bank is going to find it increasingly difficult to talk up the prospect of tapering its asset purchase program. We're going to get we look like we're going to get, it's probably a 100% certain we're going to get a June rate rise from the Federal Reserve. And that would suggest that the potential is there for further euro losses and further dollar gains. Now, the next target that I have on my euro dollar chart is around about 116. As long as we can stay below 117, 70, 118, 1820, these sort of series of highs through here, then the line of least resistance, for want of a better word, is for a lower euro and a higher dollar. And it's a similar sort of story with the pound. Um, found a little bit of a base after those very decent retail sales numbers that we saw in April. Again, they were much better than expected, but April seasonally tends to be a fairly strong month in any case. The last three years, we've seen a very poor March number and then a very strong rebound in April. So the main numbers are going to be very key in the overall context of where we go to next. Obviously, we have UK manufacturing PMI out on Friday. There does appear to be some evidence of a little bit of a rebound in UK economic activity. But whether that will be enough to support the pound against the dollar is open to debate. I still think there's potential for the pound to drop further against the dollar towards around about 131. But also this trend line from the lows that we saw at the beginning of last year. So other things I'm keeping an eye out for later this week are um, the G7 meetings, they're due to start at the end of the week. Um, they'll probably be fairly interesting in the overall scheme of things with respect to the geopolitical picture. Obviously, the Iran uh, nuclear deal, whether or not pressure will be brought to bear by EU leaders for President Trump to change his mind. But overall, I think the key, the key headlines that I will be looking out for this week is going to be European Union CPI, um, non-farm payrolls and average um, average hourly earn, average weekly earnings out of the US and obviously keep one eye on the overall political geopolitical backdrop with respect to US China trade and obviously the North Korea situation so that's it for this week thank you very much for listening it's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets